Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in and following me as I explore the incredible, amazing wide world of pens. And I'm very fortunate to be able to explore this world of pens in many ways on many levels. Yes, I got a pen from F3 today. I got on a waiting list, <laughs> it could have been almost a year ago, and finally I was contacted and said, hey, you're at the top of the waiting list. I looked at the pens that were available and the one that I fell in love with is in this box. And we're gonna open it up, take a look at it, and share with you my enjoyment of receiving this amazing pen. Upon opening up the box, we found some nice craft paper and the pen was securely rolled up in some bubble wrap. Simple packaging. It's always nice to get an included little gift. I am a bookmark. Nice. Some people may not know what it's for. And we see a lot of identification. And in this case, I'm a business card. And a nice thank you note signed by Carl. Carl and I communicated a decent amount about the pen. And there's a story behind it. But let's look at the pen. So once it got out of the bubble wrap, it was just in this interesting little pen sleeve made from folded up paper. A little bit of the pen is sticking out. And we slide the pen out. Hopefully you're as impressed as I am with the look of this pen. When I first looked at this pen, I go, wow, incredibly unique. Certainly a material I've never seen before. Using an aluminum honeycomb filled with resin and then turning it into a pen. Substantial size pen. Mr. Sizemore says, I like it. The cap unscrews. Comes off with, it appears to be almost one turn, which is great. And we'll see a classic nib there. It's in broad, it has F3 laser etched there. It's always nice, but that's the only identification on the pen. It's a decent weight. It's on the light side, but that section is just amazing. Very long, a very nice diameter. As you can see, this pen is extremely good sized. I haven't looked about posting, and it doesn't post, which is expected and fine with me, but it's just an amazing, amazing finish. So let's explore this pen a little bit more and let's see what we can do to engage Carl. I think we have to take a look at how the transition goes from this round part to the flat part. You can see how that aluminum honeycomb is used in that resin nice rounded corner. If we transition over to the bottom of the barrel, we'll see a similar type of design. And I just really appreciate the depth and variety. Every pen that Carl makes is going to be unique in many ways. And this is no example. Just have LED lights, but they should be showing off the pen fairly nicely. So one thing I enjoyed about working with Carl at F3 Pens is a lot of communications. He reached out to me in the middle of December and said, you're at the top of the waiting list. And I said, great, uh, what pen would you like? And so we went back and forth a little bit and I picked one which I'm obviously extremely happy with that I did. And I watched on Instagram the pen being made 
you know, he uses one of those nice lays. And to me, I'm impressed and, and admire someone who can put together and do something like this. I mean, it's a creative design. It's extremely interesting. And Carl does a lot of those. I suggest you reach out to F3 Pens. Instagram is a, a nice way to do it. And uh, hopefully later on, we're going to have an interview with Carl. And you can hear from him about how much and how he does his pens. Stay tuned. So after using this pen for a while, I noticed an interesting feature. The way the cap engages with the barrel is just excellent. It is one turn, but as you replace the cap, for three quarters of the turn, it's just a nice easy turn, and then that last quarter has a little bit of resistance to it, and when you finally reach that end point, that cap is securely attached. I'm certain many of you have experienced what I have is you put a cap on, especially a screw cap, and the next thing you know, the cap is loose. Could be in a pen case, sometimes just sitting on my desk. There's no way this cap is going to come off by itself. You need to put a little bit of pressure, but once you start turning it, it unscrews very easily. When I talked to Carl about this, he talked about how he uses a die to cut the threads, and that die, the threads at the end become a little less deep, and therefore you get that nice engagement for that last, about an eighth of a turn. Excellent. And I recognize Doodle Bud because he's the one who makes me focus on these details. Here we are in dark mode, and it's still amazing how this finish and resin and ah, beautiful creative design work. We must bring in the LED to play on this resin. The light just really accentuates all the nuances of this resin. If we look inside, we'll see the normal machining. Nice legend there. You know, one-piece cap. I ordered it without a clip because I think this design just looks great without a clip. If we put the LED inside, we'll really get a, a good view of how that honeycomb aluminum is embedded with that resin and creates such a great variety. Just beautiful. And even though these are both the same, I'm certain every pen is completely unique. No two are the same. And that resinet was used for the bottom of the barrel and also used for the section. Just really complements the color of this sand mosaic finish. Ah, absolutely lovely. And we would be remiss if we wouldn't take a look at how that sand color and texture with that glitter added to that section really adds to the look. And all of these pieces are fairly thick. Threads are great. And I was impressed that there was threads at the bottom of the Converter, so it's a threaded converter. Really nice touch. It's a Schmidt, which goes with the German nib. Wow. All day entertainment. This is an amazing resin to watch it rotate and how the light catches that incredible variation in the resin and how it's accentuated by that honeycomb aluminum base that the resin is poured into and then turned. As I'm watching this turn, hopefully the camera is catching all the nuances. Well, here's some pens I put together to show you relatively the size of the F3 compared to some other pens. On this side are what I would consider to be oversized pens that I have, the Vizier flat top a Heinz Elementar, and an oversized Esterbrook SD, and a diminutive Pilot Metropolitan, and even small by these pens, a Pelican M800. 
I'm just impressed. I may have saw dimensions for this pen before I bought it, but it certainly is large, and it is large in all the good ways. So here's a look at the pens uncapped, and the F3 still dominates this group, both aesthetically and functionally. I didn't post because these are pens I wouldn't post. Well, maybe the Metropolitan and the M800 post well, and so does the SD, but in the Heinz is a screw to post, which makes for a very, very long pen. All of these have interesting nibs. All of these have nice sections, except for the Metropolitan. Let's scan real quickly the nibs and sections. The gold uh, Yovo nib on the F3 certainly stands out in this group. The SD also has a Yovo nib. And the Heinz has a nice darker nib. The Vizier has one of their own nibs. And the Pilot Metropolitan nib certainly looks extremely diminutive. And even the M800 nib, you know, kind of holds its own. Obviously, it's a nice two-tone, nice amount of engraving on it. But from a writing experience, these two are broad nibs, and they write very, very well. I really like them a lot. The SD has a nice 1.1 stub. What's nice about the Heinz is you have a hard rubber section here, which really feels good in the hand, as you probably may know. But this design of the F3 section, again, surprises me. Very functional, very nice to hold in your hand. So now it's time for some editorial comments, some dimensions, and obviously how the pen writes with this Jadeite Peacock ink. I'm pretty certain you're all aware of how much I really like this pen. I think the challenge for me is, is when I spend money on a pen, which is basically anything over $100, probably over 50. I have high expectations for it. And this pen was over that, obviously. But it's exceeded my expectations. There's nothing else that looks like this. And it's not just the material and the look of the pen. It's the feel of the pen, the fit and finish, just all the little aspects of this design. And it's a large pen, and I can enjoy a large pen. I like the transition of the material between the cap and the barrel and the section. The fact that the cap comes off in a little over one turn, which is excellent. Ugh, couldn't imagine a better fitting pen in my hand. And I'm not a poster, so the fact that it doesn't post has no impact on my ability to enjoy using this pen. So let's take a look at the dimensions of the pen. And also, let me show you the dimensions of that section because it's just an excellent job. And those are the types of things that you really can't, at least I can't, determine from just looking at a picture of something on the internet. Yeah, you know, it's great going to pen shows where you can pick up a pen and hold it and write with it and talk to somebody like Carl from F3 and, and talk to them about the making of the pen, how they decided on it, how they picked the color and the resin. But occasionally you just have to have faith and trust and pull the trigger, as another pen reviewer might say, and be rewarded by acquiring an incredibly nice writing instrument that just brings joy and pleasure and encourages you to put ink on paper, and let's do that right now. My F3 pen called out for this ink. I actually now have two bottles of it. It's a beautiful brown. Chromatography shows no water resistance in brown with a little bit of blue in it. But what makes this ink interesting is it has some gold glitter in it. And it goes into suspension very easily. It's a nice fine glitter. I like it. Adds a little bit of character to the ink when you write.
I enjoy broad nibs, and with this ink, it really shows it off extremely well. People like Yovo, people like Bach. I have a number of broad nibs, and my Bach nibs I enjoy better than the Yovo nibs for a couple reasons. Number one, they feel better on paper. Number two, they're a little softer. I mean, this nib is like, say, an 8 out of 10, where my box will be like a 9.5 out of 10. So with no pressure, it lays down like a medium line. Good ink flow. Increase the pressure. You get more ink flow. The line gets a little wider, as you can see. So it does respond well. This is a Yovo nib, and it really doesn't have any reflections on the F3 pen. You got a choice of Yovo nibs, and if you want to swap it out and lose that nice laser etched F3 on the nib, then you can put in a full line of nibs that are available from Yovo with that just unscrews, as you saw when I took the pen apart. So let's rate this pen. And I think you know what it's going to get. It's going to get a 10.0 plus. It gets two checks for just being a phenomenal instrument. And yes, that nib requires some pressure to write, but the pen oh, makes up for it. It gets two checks for a great design, fit, finish, and build. It's just phenomenal. There's nothing else like it. I'm going to have many, many hours of pleasurable writing experience with this pen. I'm going to enjoy showing it to my pen friends when we ever do get together again. Carl, welcome. Thank you. Welcome to Pen Talk, as, as, I, as I call this uh, YouTube channel. Thank you for joining. I, I appreciate that, and I love the pen that I uh, have from you. It's, it's beautiful. How did you start making pens? Oh, so I started making pens um, almost by accident. Um, we were, uh, I was a, just a hobbyist woodworker at the time, and uh, we went to a local wood show when they still had the, the traveling wood show up in Charlotte sold parts for what was called kit pens just you know basic here's a bunch of hardware turn a piece of wood glue it in and make a nice pen out of it at the time my boys were probably i don't know i'd have to do the math but i want to say in the six or eight range um and they hey we want to try that okay well we you know they wanted to try it i said all right well i'm gonna try it too i mean i'm a woodworker i've never really messed with a lathe before let me see what this is all about um, so long story short is, uh, there's a lot more to that story, but long story short is that kind of got us hooked on it at the time. We kind of tooled up with a basic wood lathe and some hand tools and, and started with the, you know, started with the way, the way a lot of the, uh, pen makers do with, with these, you know, these kind of budget low end, low end kit pens. And this is where we learned a lot about how to deal with materials and how to deal with, um, taking a pen that you might see from a hundred other people making the same pen and making it unique, making it something that I enjoyed making, making it something that my boys or my, uh, or, or my wife enjoyed making um, in finding ways to really make it ours, you know, special, you know, playing with different materials, um, different mix and match of materials and combining things to make them really kind of stand out and, and stand out over and above what you might see at a typical craft show. So that was the start of the, the slippery slope. Along the way, uh, you know, you start going to some of the some of these wood turner meetings and these pen turner meetings and you start meeting a lot of different people. And at the time I was living fairly close to, um, if you're familiar with Jonathan Brooks from Carolina Pen Company. So I was living relatively close to him about a two hour drive away and we met at one of the, the local pen turner gatherings and we hit it off. He had a daughter, you know, a little bit older than mine at the time. And, you know, my wife and I and my daughter would go. And so we kind of got to know each other as a family. So he kind of introduced me to the custom pen world, the, 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 the elevated, you know, taking it to the next level. Uh, 10, 11 years uh, down the road, I, I kind of treat 
turning fountain pens a little bit differently than some of the other makers. Um, you know, we're, we're small, we're just a family, you know, we're a family of five, but the two boys off at college, it's just my wife and, and my daughter and I now here at the house, you know, I, I, we're, we're kind of that company of one and a half, you know, we kind of look at it or I, I especially look at it, um, as, as I want to continue to make pens that excite me. Um, and hopefully the pens that excite me will excite my customers. So, what we've done, um, you know, I've, I've kind of been in that boat where I've burned out. I've burned out on the, you know, I'm, I'm, it's just turning into a day job. Um, I have a day job. I don't need a second day job. Um, and as an artist, I started to get burned out on the production side of things when, when kind of the run of the mill pens got to be where I was just cranking out the same thing over and over. Um, so I kind of put everything on pause a little over a year ago now. About six months went by and, you know, as an artist, I started to get the, the whole idle hands thing. You know, I, I needed to be doing something. I needed to be creating something, crafting something. And, you know, I was filling that with other hobbies. I was making, you know, fishing rods and, and doing just other things that were not really as satisfying. So I said, all right, let's, let's kind of rebrand a little bit. Let's lose some of the there was some history to the name. We, we used to operate as Fisher of Pens. There was some history around that name I wanted to leave behind. Um, I wanted to leave behind the constant confusion between us and Fisher Space Pen, um, which great company, but you know, we just happen to have the same last name. So as I'm at pen shows, it's, it, 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 you know, hey, I've got one of your space pens. No, that's not me. I'm sorry. Um, great company. I'm glad you're patroning them, but that's not me. So there was enough that I, I wanted to do a little bit of a rebranding and restructure about how we went about what we did. I relaunched as F3 Pens, which in short stands for Fisher Family Fountain Pens. Um, much more to it than that, but that's the that's the kind of brief version of what F3 means. Really have spent time since we've launched focusing on really culling our material selection, being very specific about the material we choose, or alternately, if I can't be specific about the material, doing something with the pen that makes it stand out where maybe it's more of a common material, but the pen itself is a little bit different in some way, whether it be things like, you know, when I make the double-ended fountain pens, or if I, you know, take something and put a, a secondary material in there, be it a band or an inlay, you know, I've um, got a meandering dragon scale inlay on a pen that I did at one point. I mean, just something to make it kind of pop and stand out as, as one of mine. The way I look at it, and I, I, I said this recently on, um, if you don't mind me mentioning the as the pot, as the pen turns podcast, um, I said on their podcast, it's about the happy dance. I make something that makes me a little, do a little happy dance once it's made, and with the hope that when I send it to you and you open that box, even if it's for just ten seconds of your day, you do a little happy dance inside that that hey, I this first impression of this thing is wonderful. I really love this, you know, and that's. That's my goal. You know, the, the fact that it's a fountain pen is great. I love the fountain pen community, everybody I've ever met. But at the same time, it's very satisfying to me as a maker that I can produce something on a scale that I'm willing to invest time in and see a start to finish product in much less time than, say, a full woodworking project um, and still put it in your hands and still see you get the enjoyment and make and do that again, do that little happy dance to may have that enjoyment of opening up the package and, and holding that pen um, and hopefully enjoying writing with it. Or, you know, in some cases I've had people ask me to make heirloom pens that they're going to pass down to their kids and on. So, you know, really working with a customer, hand holding them, walking them through a process, designing what they want, or in lieu of them not knowing what they want, designing something that I think is unique, that's in the spirit of kind of what they're after. That's what I'm going towards. I'm not looking to make a hundred pens a month. I'm not looking to sell a thousand pens, you know, in a year. I want to make, I do batches of five. I say, hey, go sign up for my wait list. And you were on my wait list. Yep. Um, go sign up for my wait list. Um, when I get to you, I'll get to you. And I don't mean that in a negative way or any, there's nothing behind that other than it keeps me from burning out. It allows me to take and say, I'm going to make five pens that customers have asked for. And at the same time, I'm going to sprinkle in a couple pens that I want to make and, and really express some creativity or, or stretch my design or my capabilities in a new way. And then when I finish up those five pens, I might take a little bit of a break. How do I find the materials? 
Sometimes it's by accident, honestly, and sometimes it's by inspiration that I've seen somewhere else. Um, you know, I've had, I've reached out to blank makers, you know, some of the, some of the people who make the raw materials for these pens. I'm part, I'm, I'm partially colorblind, which kind of makes it so that making my own materials is not necessarily a recommended pastime. Um, there are people out there who are so much better at color mix and what they do than I could ever be. And I'm happy to patron them. I am absolutely happy to spend money to ask somebody to make a material for me that I'm going to take and create my own creation out of, you know, talking about not just material, but design. Um, every one of the custom pen makers tends to develop their own unique signature design. I mean, you can put 30 custom pen makers side by side and there's little variances between them. You know, some have longer sections, some have longer bodies, some are fatter, some are skinnier, some are different size caps or drilled differently. I mean, everything about them is just different enough that, um, you know, from a pen maker's perspective, you, you organically find what, I don't know, you almost, you almost accidentally fall into what works. And over the years, I've tweaked those designs to the point where I've started to actually, I went from, you know, yeah, this is a nice pen to no feedback to actively getting, Hey, I really like, you know, this grip section, or I really like that you set your, you know, your, your step on your body back further than some of the other, than the other pens or, you know, and, it, and that's the kind of stuff that's like, okay, great. I, I've hit on something that went from, yeah, it's, it, it's out there. Nobody's really going out of their way to mention it to, hey, we really like this, which means, hey, I've done something right. Let me keep doing that. Materials are just random inspiration of things that I've seen or, or cared for or, or think that I can do differently. Designs are things that have grown organically over time or have become stretch goals where somebody's asked me to do something beyond what my capabilities were to that point. And I've learned to do it and, and come up with ways that I can do it repetitive, you know? So I, you know, it, it's, it's just a combination of all of that stuff. It's growth as a pen maker. It's, it's listening to customer feedback, soliciting customer feedback reviews happening across random things that inspire um, and all of that together, uh, you know, and that's why I look at it as more of an art form and less of a manufacturing you know, process. It's not, I'm not cranking out a black pen with a white band uh, over and over and over again. I'm, you know, making something and, and you'll see that my, my website is not heavily stocked with, with pens, or if it is, it's not stocked with more than one of any given pen. You'll see one of this design, one of that design, one of this material. I don't run, you know, 10 of a pen, the same pen and the same material and just put up quantity 10. I want my pens to be unique, every one of them to be unique and every one of them to have the attention that I think that it deserves when I'm creating it. And that I think you deserve as a customer when you receive it. With my models, I've only got a handful of models. I mean, I've got, you know, and I, and I call them very simple numbers. Um, I've done the whole naming schemes in the past. I followed as Fisher of Pens. I followed down the whole Greek and Roman God, you know, you know, the mythology and this pen's a Hydra and this pen's an Apollo and an Athena. And it's like, I lost track of that stuff in my head. Eventually, it got to be a point where I didn't even remember what the names were, were, were you know, what their meaning was as far as a pen goes. So I went sim simple, model one, model two, model three, whatever. But you know, and that that design that gives you the base, <clears throat> the basic, I guess I would call them guardrails of of the pen design. You know, it gives you the base of the pen design, but. That's where my two-way conversation comes in with you. People don't come to me and say, oh, just give me a stock model one. It's, hey, I want one of these, but I want to taper the body a little bit, or I want to round the, the finials, or I want to cone the finials, or I want to, you know, I want to make it postable, or I want to, you know, break the edges on an angle or a round. So that, that becomes a, a, a two-way conversation between us, between the customer, you know, you, you as the customer and, and myself as the, the artist. Oh, what's, what's coming in the future. Um, so in the future, I'm looking at a couple of different tweaks to some of the models that are, are additional features you can add to the pen, but I'm also looking at some things. I'm, I'm working on some things that I can't speak to at the moment because it's going to be an exclusive pen for, for another uh, seller that we're working on a, a really unique design that I've never done before. Um, and has some features to it that take it beyond just a typical, you know, round stick pen design. You know, there's a lot, 
down the road. There's a lot that's in the back of my head that are things that I really want to do when I kind of feel like going out and spending a day in the shop, just experimenting and coming up with some concepts and, and some things that may or may not work, you know, try them, throw them away. Sometimes I'll fire up AutoCAD and I'll sit there and I'll play with some, Hey, can I, can I physically, can I physically fit a nib and a converter in this body that I have pictured in my head? And so sometimes I'll sit down at the computer and I'll play with that stuff. Based on our conversation, if there's viewers who are interested in following up with you, what's the best way to contact you? Uh, my primary presence is on Instagram. Um, it's it's f 3 pens on Instagram. 90% um, of what I post is going to be there because when I'm out in the shop, I take a snapshot with my phone and I'll post it, throw some basic details on there or whatever. Um, I'll post some of my spec pens that I just, you know, feel like creating the, the whole two for you, one for me thing. And if I feel like creating something, I'll post it up on Instagram before I, before it ever goes anywhere near my website. Um, eventually, if a pen's been sitting on Instagram for a while, I'll trickle it down to the website and I'll actually, you know, and that's going to be f3pens.com and I'll post it up on the website for a formal, you know, storefront. Um, and you can go there and you can purchase um, you can go to Instagram. You can, if you see something, you can message me directly. You'd also use my website as a gateway to the wait list. So, you know, if you decide that you do want to, you know, do some, some designs with me or work with me and, and get a pen from, from, uh, from us, I say us, my family and I, um, if you want to get a pen from, from me, um, you know, getting on the wait list is the first step. And then we can always work out the details later. Even if you don't know what it is you want, you know, if you're, 15, 20 people back in the wait list, get signed up now and several months down the road, hey, are you ready to start talking about what you want to make? And at that point, you know, if you've got an idea what you want to make, great. If you don't, I'll bump you down to the back of the wait list and we'll try again, you know, when, when you're ready. So those are the two, you know, my website to get to the wait list, my website to see the, the few odd pens that I will currently have available for sale. Instagram is the, is the, the best way to follow me. This custom pen industry where it's not just an injection molded pen has taken off so big in the last five to six years that you go to DC, you go to Atlanta, you go to, you know, Triangle Pen Show, and you're seeing more and more makers and everyone has their style and everyone has their, their flair and their uniqueness that, you know, we've all by and large become friends because it's not a, it's not a cutthroat thing. We all live to see other makers thrive because it only helps the industry. It only helps the custom pen, you know, uh, awareness, you know, you might get on your 11,000 followers. Maybe they don't all know that custom pens exist. Maybe there's that one or two out there that, Hey, I didn't know this was a thing and it speaks to them. And all of a sudden they've got a whole new avenue of pen collecting that they didn't, you know, anticipate that really sparks their, you know, their desire to, to, to find something unique and, and whether it's through me or, you know, mythic pens or Jason, you know, you know, any of these pen makers, you know, uh, Hardy or, or, you know, uh, any, any one of, and I apologize, I could go on and on with, with makers and resin makers and all that stuff. And I, it might feel like that I'm endorsing them. And in a sense, I am, you know, I I'm yes, I make fountain pens to sell. Yes. I, I have a competitive side to me where I want to sell. Um, but at the same time, if I don't make something that speaks to you, but somebody else does, it only helps what we do as, as artists, as, as makers, as small business owners. And it's, it's just a phenomenal, it's a phenomenal thing to be in. And the fountain pen, um, you know, collective, the, 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 the consumers, the makers, the, the manufacturers are just wonderful people. Will you be attending any pen shows go. in 2022? Um, so the only pen show that I'm likely to attend this year is going to be the new show in Orlando. Um, there's a brand new show that is being organized and it seems to have a lot of traction behind it right now, primarily because one, I've, I'm still on the small scale side of things. I don't have a lot of, I don't have a lot of friends to bring to a show. So I can't do, you know, back to back shows. I did Atlanta and I did, uh, you know, uh, DC and I did triangle and it's like, I can't keep up with the number of pens that I need to bring to a show. Cause you might go to DC and sell out and have nothing to bring to the next show on your list. Other than the fact that I like to collect hobbies or as my wife would call it, you know, I, I've just got so many things, my fingers in so many things, but I always seem to come back to fountain pens and I like to take what I've learned in other hobbies and bring it to my fountain pen work. So going forward, if you start seeing things like um, custom thread wrapping, which is things that I do for my fishing rods, 
may, might start creeping up in my fountain pens. If you start seeing, you know, some, some unique things that I've done elsewhere, start creeping into my fountain pens, you know, just keep an eye on it. Um, just because what I'm posting on Instagram today may not thrill you right now. I may hit on something six months from now, a year from now, a week from now that, you know, that, that really does kind of stand out and speak to you. That being said, my only parting words, you know, I'm, I'm extremely happy, um, you know, that, that you're enjoying the pen that I sent you. Um, you know, I'm my own worst critic. So I look at it on the video and I look at it and say, Ooh, okay. That's that, that showed up in your lighting that I didn't expect. And I'd love to, to tweak that a little bit. Um, you know, but you know, if, if it didn't, if it didn't speak to you, then, then it's me being super critical as, as the maker, you know? So, you know, to, to my customers, it's a two-way street. I'd love to work with you and design the pen that you want, even if it's just little tweaks on standard pens that I have or pens that I have in a different particular material that, that you want. Um, reach out to me and let's have, a, let's have a conversation. Don't be afraid to DM me. Don't be afraid to send me an email. Ask questions. You know, I've had people, I, I, this is my first custom pen. I don't even know where to start. Great. I will walk you through and, and I will, you know, I will hold your hand the whole step of the way. And at the end of the day, if it's, we don't come to something that you like, okay, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that, but I've educated you along the way. If you decide that there's another pen maker that's better suited for you, great. My job is to bring awareness to that, to that industry and to those makers. Um, by all means, please patron me as a small business owner. Um, you know, it, it puts, it puts Christmas presents under the tree. It helps put the, put the two kids through college and, and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I'm happy when you're happy. And if what I can make makes you happy, that's what I look for. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank all of you for watching. I hope you can find a pen that you can fall in love with and just encourages you to write. I hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy. Put some ink on paper. Enjoy the experience of writing, drawing, doodling, sketching, journaling, writing recipes, writing letters. Just write. We've reached the end of this video. And we're going to say bye. Enjoy your pens. I will certainly enjoy this one.